Hello everyone. Guys, I remember this very clearly that few months back I had asked you all that whether you would want history related videos on this channel or book related. Because you know, I like making both the types of videos because both the niches are very very close to my heart. In fact, I had also conducted a poll on my YouTube community tab and the result said that you guys want me to make a separate channel wherein I just um, you know, particularly talk about the history videos. And in fact, I had thought of making a separate channel as well. But to be honest, um, I might not have been able to, you know, sort of handle both the channels, considering the fact that I have other priorities too. I had other engagements like my studies and other stuff, which is why I dropped the idea of making a separate channel and decided that I will make both the types of videos on this single platform only. Also, as far as my YouTube analytics are concerned, it clearly shows guys that my history view history videos had more views in comparison to my bookish videos. Uh, so I really hope guys that you will fully support this decision of mine and will continue to give the same kind of love you have been giving to my videos till date. And I'm really very grateful to each one of you. Now let's come to today's topic without talking much. Also, in case you do not know, you can check my playlist. I have almost covered the, you know, almost all the topics of the ancient as well as medieval history. If a few are left, then I will definitely try to cover those videos as well. So you can definitely check the playlist. And also, I will try to put the link in the description bar below. Now, the topic which I'm going to start today is a topic related to modern history. All right. So as you already have, uh, you know, guessed from the title by now that in today's video, I'm going to be discussing about the revolt of 1857 or what you call as the Sepoy Mutiny or even the first war of independence. So first of all, let's see the table of contents that we have. Also, um, I will provide the link of the uh, PDF in the description. You can download it for free. Now, let's see the table of contents that we have. So very first, we will see the introduction part wherein we'll talk about the you know brief background to it. Then we will see the causes or what you say as reasons for this revolt to happen, you know, under which we will cover the military causes, social religious causes, economic causes, political causes, so on and so forth. And we will finally wrap this video with the reasons for the failure of this revolt. So let's proceed ahead. All right. So the revolt of 1857 or what you call as Sepoy Mutiny, the first war of independence started on 10th of May 1857. So date is very much important. Sometimes see the significant battles are often given the import are often given a lot of importance in, you know, MCQ type questions. So you can definitely memorize and it was one of the very important revolts um, when we talk about the modern history. So yeah, and it ended on 8th of July 1859 so it basically remained in momentum for two years now the question here is why did it start in the first place like you know what would have happened back in time which led to the sepoy mutiny of 1857 so we are gonna you know uh, see the brief background to it see no rebellion happens suddenly or overnight you know the reasons keep growing behind and due to the suppressed plight of many people rebe rebellions like these happen and that is exactly what happened in the case of revolt of 1857 there was not one reason not two reasons not three reasons for uh, this revolt to happen but there were several factors which you know sort of propagated or forced the indians to revolt against the british authority and therefore let's discuss all those reasons one by one so first we will see the military cause and then we will see the religious causes economic causes political causes so the first military cause was the discrimination was the discrimination between the indian and the british sepoys see east india company discriminated between indians and european soldiers even though they belong to the same rank in duty you know, British sepoys were treated as superior and were paid very, uh, you know, handsome uh, salary and they were paid comparatively more than the Indian soldiers. So this sort of propagated or fueled the Indians, thus contributing to one of the reasons of the revolt. So the economic discrimination, you can say, was one of the reasons for the uh, discontentment among the sepoys. 
now indian men were not given any promotions in military field you know apart from less pay poor scope of promotion also resented the indian military men to a greater extent you can say no foreign allowances to indian sepoys while serving overseas was also you know not liked by the indian rulers and they resented and for very obvious reasons so these were some military reasons which led to the revolt of 1857 now let us see what were the religious uh, causes for the uh, revolt of 1857 so one of the prominent reasons which led to this uh, revolt was the prohibition to carry any sectarian mark or symbol and wear turbans this was an alarm to indian supporters of their religion being in danger and thus they revolted you know so indians were not at all ready to compromise with their religious belief and faith and ideologies and britishers were very adamant in their sort of rules and regulations so this greatly angered the indians and they resented now also britishers were meddling with lot and lot of cultural um, rituals of the indians you know he they had abolished a lot of social evils which was actually good which was prevalent at that time uh like they abolished sati they also propagated widow remarriage etc etc and this gave a very serious you know blow to the britishers uh, sorry this gave a very serious blow to the indians and uh, which was certainly not liked by the indians they did not like the interference of the british britishers in their cultural matters so this also contributes to one of the reasons social religious reasons for this revolt to happen another very important cause was the promotion of christianity yes the britishers were very much adamant and they wanted christianity to attain its form based within the indian men and uh, they were also sort of prop, uh, propagating the western education and thus it was leading to dissatisfaction among the indians as they were very uh, you know uh, bothered by the fact that britishers are degrading their culture and customs and traditions so it was also one of the reasons now also there was one rumor which was uh, sort of gaining the momentum and it was and indians believe that the britishers were using grease cartridges in the infield rifles which apparently used the fat of animals like cow and pig which was severely severely resented by uh, both hindus and muslims alike as they considered it to be a sin so they did not like this idea at all now moving ahead we also saw that the britishers were trying to impose tax on lands belonging to temples and mosques and this greatly angered indians and muslims alike and uh, they were given the hint that their religion was under a great threat so indians more specifically did not like anybody to meddle with their religious affairs so it was a severe a blow to the indians and uh, they naturally did not expect the uh, uh, the uh, british interference to reach at that extreme stage so yeah this was also one of the reasons uh, another reason which really propagated this movement was the religious disabilities act of 1856 now under this act even if one converts one religion still he would inherit his father's property so this so this also sort of was a red flag to the indians and yeah these were some of the religious reasons which were responsible for the revolt of 1857 or the sepoy mutiny let's put it this way now we shall see few of the economic factors or let's say few economic reasons which were responsible for this revolt very first we have is cheap and machine made goods from england now the cheap machine made goods from england became very much accessible to uh, and became very popular in indian markets indian market was flooded with machine made goods from england see it's very obvious that when indian people started getting machine made goods and that too of a very superior quality and at a very reasonable prices they started naturally they started shifting their attention towards that and this led to the exploitation of the indian workers and uh, naturally so because uh, you yourself you can think that humans will work much slower and with less output than machines moreover machine made goods were very much uh, cheap they were pocket friendly so this was one of the very prominent reasons which uh, propagated this revolt another reason was the policy of heavy sorry yeah another reason was the policy of heavy taxation so britishers under the land revenue system uh, would often put very high taxes on peasants and farmers 
Now the farmers were compelled to borrow money from the money lenders to pay the taxes and due to non-payment, in case of non-payment, they used to get into debt trap and in turn they were exploited very badly. So uh, this was also one of the very important reasons which, uh, uh, which was responsible for this revolt. Then we have foreign indigo plantation. Now Britishers forced Indian planters to grow indigo because blue dye was very much in demand in European market. So therefore peasants from Bengal resented and revolted against it as it was commercially not profitable for Indian farmers. They did not want to you know, produce indigo, they wanted to produce something else but they were forced to do that which is why they resented and so these were some of the economic reasons which were responsible for the revolt of 1857 and at last we are going to see what were the political causes which propagated this revolt. So very first and very well known political cause was the doctrine of lapse. So it was imposed by Lord Dalhousie and it created a huge fuss back then. It was um, certainly not liked by the Indians and as a result of this policy, the Britishers refused to recognize or accept adoption. You know, this meant that if the king of a princely state dies without a male heir, then his territory or kingdom will directly go into the possession of the Britishers. So basically ruler were not allowed adoption. So this was one of the political causes which was responsible for this movement. Next we have subsidiary alliance and this was propagated by Lord Wellesley. So these questions can come in uh, you know one marker type. So you need to have a firm grip over all these uh, short type questions. So this was introduced by Lord Wellesley and the subsidiary alliance as a result of this policy Indian rulers lost their sovereignty. Now this policy basically established the supremacy of the Britishers. Under this rule or under this policy the Indian rulers had to agree that it would not enter into any treaty with any foreign power and formulate policies and plans. I mean they had to surrender completely to the British power. They did not have any option uh, left whatsoever. Moving ahead. Moving ahead, Bahadur Shah Zafar was greatly disrespected as he was told to relinquish the Red Fort. Rani Lakshmi Bai and Nana Sahib were also disrespected and humiliated. So this was one such reason. Now comes annexation of Awadh. So this was also one of the very highlighted political cause of the uh, revolt of 1857 and uh, Awadh was annexed by the Britishers and this made Indian very, very, very furious. So overall, if we see British interference was the only reason or the concrete reason if we take into consideration the political scenarios back then. So up till now we discussed about the socio-religious causes, economic causes, political causes, military causes of the revolt and now we shall be discussing the reasons for the you know failure of this revolt and thereafter I will wrap this video up. So these were some of the reasons which I have uh, summarized in the form of this short mini flowchart. So very f first reason was the lack of effective leadership. So this movement collapsed as it, there was no effective leadership to sort of, uh, um, you know, emphasize the importance of this revolt. Uh, if the, if the revolt was also non-centralized, the equipments, the ruler, uh, the fighters or the revolutionaries were uh, using were very obsolete. Uh, people were not ready to participate. So these were some of the reasons. Now we shall discuss them one by one. So the prime reason for the failure of this revolt was uh, that it could not garner, it should be garner, sorry for the little typing error. So the, it could not uh, garner the participation of the entire country. Some part of the North and Central India showed active participation, but the Eastern, Western and Southern India completely refused from participating. So this was one of the reasons. Secondly, as I already mentioned, the equipments were you know, old, they were not very uh, developed or fancy, they were very obsolete. So Indians had very poor equipment, whereas Britishers had, had better arms, ammunition, weapons. In fact, uh, they had well equipped and better army. Third, we uh, they had lack of effective leadership. So the Sipoy mutiny failed due to the lack of effective leadership. You know, leaders like Nana Saheb, Lakshmi Bhai, Tantya Top did, uh, you know, uh, lead the revolt to greater heights but still it failed to leave any impact. Leaders had scattered here and there and many personal motives were also there which led to the uh, collapse of this revolt. So this was one of the reasons for the uh, failure of this uh, uh, mutiny. Uh, moving ahead, another reason which uh, 
uh, which led to the failure of this revolt was uh, very few class of people participated like money lenders big zamindars and uh, educated elites did not participate in this revolt owing to their personal gain or personal motive or uh, what you call it as protected interest they had their fair share of reasons as to why they did not feel like participating in this revolt so this revolt sort of remained very weak from the very beginning also educa educated section did not support the revolt in the hope that the britishers might bring in some modernization and remove the backwardness of the country also ruling class did not favor the revolt as they were as they were greatly supported and favored by the britishers so these were some of the reasons which uh, led to the total collapse of this movement and yeah that's it guys this was the first video uh which i made related to history after a really long time and i know you guys used to love those videos and i'm back with it so please support it and show some love and yeah for today it's a wrap i will try to post many videos concerning academic topics so yeah until then be safe do well keep connected and thank you